Hi, it's me Nassin, and I'm so excited to be here to present both our H index and ITIN index. What is H index? This index was suggested in 2005 by J. E. Harish from University of California, San Diego. This index is used to determine the research impact of an individual researcher. So, this is a way of gauging the productivity of a researcher. It weights and ranks the impact of researcher, not necessarily the impact of any particular research publication. So it is important to gauge it, uh, to gauge of a work. How do you measure how good you are as a scientist? And if you want to answer another question, such as, how would you compare the impact of two scientists in a field? Or what if you had to decide which one would get a grant, one method is the H index. So, why the H index is important? The H index is an outer level metric that measures both the productivity and citation impacts of the publication initially used for an individual scientist or scholars. The H index thus combines an assessment of both quantity, when we say quantity, it means the number of papers, and approximation of quality refers to impacts or citation to these papers, is another way to help gauge the productivity of a researcher or scholars. So it helps in increasing the impact of research work. The me these metrics help in measuring how much a researcher article is cited by the co-researchers, co-authors, and the others. It is essential to know that competition for academic jobs, particularly postdocs, is very high and challenging and as a top work. So as a result, researchers can co obtain a scholarships, fellowships, scientific jobs, and job opportunities worldwide according to their resume and scientific metrics. Therefore, the H index can show the ranking of a scholars applying for a position and as really important such other metrics for this aim. How do we calculate the H index? In the main paper of Harish with this title, he put a good definition uh, for H index and it's really exciting for me, interesting for me that the abstract of this paper has two lines. Try to focus on this concept. He said that I propose the H index defined as the number of papers with citation numbers greater or equal H as a useful index to characterize the scientific output of a researcher. So it is the main uh, definition of H index. N articles have at least N citations each. So we can better understand this concept by some examples. Let's get started with an example here. We have a sample here for a researcher, suppose a researcher, with five different publications. The number of citations is accordingly presented here. If we want to know to calculate H index and what it is, what the H index is, so first of all, we should order it from the largest to the lowest, like this, 8, 5, 4, 2, 1. And if we want to know that how we can calculate it, so consider that 8, 5, 4 has, there are three numbers more than three. So we can say that we can calculate it two here because it is less than three. And just five, eight, and four considered for H index. So the H index would be three. We can say that this author's H index is three because the author has three publications with at least three or more citations. So that's really important to know it. And it's really easy to calculate after to take this one. Another example is here. I presented to you to better understand. 
We have another researcher with these papers and different citations. First of all, we should try to order them from the largest to the uh, lowest one, like this. And then we try to calculate the H index. It would be 4, because 25, 8, 5, and 4, 4 paper has at least 4 citations more like this. You can see this definition here for better understanding. Please try uh, to repeat it and try to count it, it for yourself to better understand it. How do I find my H index score? You can try to find it from Google Scholar, Web of Science, and also Scopus. If you have other, uh, other ideas, please put the comments which other uh, fun, uh, sources can show us. Put them and the below video. And then another question uh, would be important for us to better understanding it's about I-10. From July 2011, Google have provided an automatically calculated H index and I-10 index with their own Google Scholar profile. This is very easy to calculate. We say that I-10 the number of publication with at least 10 citations. So it's really easy to calculate and it's really straightforward. It's not widely used at universities, but it is good beside the H index for knowing better uh, about a uh, activity of a researcher. How do we calculate the item? It's really easy, easier than the H index. Suppose that we have a researcher with these papers. I uh, put them like this. It is not necessary to order from the largest to the lowest, but I put it for better understanding. And I-10 index would be 4 because 13, 11, 10, 10, 4 papers with more than four, uh, 10 citations. So the I-10 would be 4. There are some tips here. Before that, I want to uh, point here that having a few publications were remarked by colleagues better than having a long list of publications cited poorly or not at all. Consider this point before starting the tips. The first tip that I want to show you is that Harish himself writes that obviously a single number can never give more than a rough approximation to an individual uh, and many other factors should be considered in combination in evaluating an individual. So we should consider this point, not uh, just take care about uh, H index, we should consider other things. The second one, getting a lot of citations on only one or two papers will not give you a high H index. So it is the second one that you should consider it. If your only one paper has a lot of citations, this will be shown in a low H index. The third item that you should consider it, it doesn't tell you whether a researcher was the only author on a paper or won a large group. You can uh, conceive it, uh, you can uh, receive it from H index only. The fourth one, H index that matched the number of years a scholar has been working in the field of a uh, respectable score. Harish tried to calculate it by dividing a scientist's H index by the number of years that have been passed from the first publication. With this one, with a score of one, it would be very good for categorizing them. If it is two, being outstanding one as a researcher and three truly exceptional. There is another uh, definition that Harish presented after 20 years of research an H index of 20 is good, 40 is out outstanding, and 60 is exceptional. It is good to know about these points. And the fifth one, it tells you nothing about the science or ideas behind a researcher achievement. So I think it is a big drawback of the H index. And yes, these are all about uh, tips related to H index. Please try to uh, understand them and analyze them for better understanding. How can I increase my H index? First of all, working on your writing. It's really important. I put some uh, another videos for keywords and how can you promote your papers to get more citations. Please uh, watch that video. It, it uh, will be very useful for you 
for this item. Work on your writing. It's really important to increase in your H index to boost it. So the second one for increasing the H index, it would be quality and innovation. If you put some innovation on the paper and try to increase the, in the quality, then other uh, uh, researchers try to cite your paper and obviously your H index would be increased. And the third one is collaborate with uh, more mature researchers, but consider that for example, you might get a group of researchers who often cite each other's work simply to increase their H index. It's not good, it's not fair. Try to uh, collaborate with the most experienced researcher in your field of study, and it helps you to increase uh, your citation and H index. The fourth item is choose your journal K free. Publication in a journal with a high impact factor are considered to be the most a prestigious one. And also another important thing is open access. Open access also would be good as a uh, as you might accept uh, to uh, uh, open access journal get more citations of your papers as a peripheral items uh, that you can consider. Fifth one is network. Network, network is so important because attending conferences and meeting whenever you can, this will help you to promote your work and find new collaborators. So try to do to make uh, some networks and connections. And as the last one, social media, thinking about writing a blog about your work or being present on social media, uh, such as LinkedIn, such as ResearchGate, it will also help you to connect with others in your field of study. So these are all about items that can help you to increase your age index. Consider them and use them. Okay, at the end, I try to make uh, uh, review your understanding. I put my Google Scholar web page here. You can see my paper cited in age index and item. Let's get started with age index here. I have different papers and conferences here, 29. So we want to review it. My H index is 10. So how can we calculate it? Try it. The first one, one for the first paper, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It has two papers with 10 citations, but for H10, for H index, we should calculate one of them. So the H index would be 10. So I we should uh, eliminate other of them, delete them, and it is 10. For I10 index, it's really simple. Uh, we expect it, it is 11, so uh, try to uh, can't count it. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We should consider the second one because it has 10 citations and more. So item would be 11. These are all about uh, things about item and H index. Please subscribe to our channel, like, and don't forget to share it. Put your comments and questions below the video. Thank you so much for your attention. See you. Bye-bye.